welcome to episode 114 of the Canadian Prepper Podcast. We are recording uh, April 25th, 2021. My name is Eric. I'm the host of the show based in Southern Ontario. I'm a hunter, target shooter, ham pirate radio operator. <laughs> Yar, yeah, that's right. I want my dollar, Alan. Uh, and computer geek. Uh, as a first responder, I witnessed an over-reliance on emergency services during major events, and I started a small preparedness company to help people get prepared for at least 72 hours, if not longer. My name is Ian. I live on Vancouver Island. I'm a student in preparedness, target shooter, and my farm's designated mediocre handyman. I'm Alan. I'm a safety trainer, first responder, security expert, and overall safety nerd. And I'm Jeff. I'm based in central Ontario. I'm a target shooter, soon to be ham radio operator. And as a friend told me a few weeks ago, just a handy guy to have around. I'm also apparently Eric's designated beer drinking buddy. Yay. Heck yeah. And a pep prepper par excellence. I'm not so sure about that, but somebody's going to give me credit. I'll take it. <laughs> If you want to help support the show and keep the Canadian Prepper podcast on the air, buy some swag. We have both the t-shirts and the super wicked awesome Velcro patch at www.prepperpodcast.ca. All proceeds help keep the lights on and the backup generator fueled. And if you're enjoying the show, please take a few minutes to like us on Facebook and submit a review on iTunes. Also, we want your feedback, good or bad, or just if there's a topic you want us to cover, you can email us at feedback at pepperpodcast.ca. All right, so we've got some preferred content for you in this episode. 114 episodes in, still going with the joke. That was, that was a low blow. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, I, I blame the writer. Uh, we're going to start off Ooh. with some preparedness-related news articles. Uh, next, we'll let you know what we've done for our preparedness since the last episode, then we'll get into the main topic. So let's get into the news. General kerfuffle in Ontario, something about a constitution and an emergency response. I... I'm not going to go into terrible details, but bad decisions were made and then rescinded, but only kind of, and Ford only apologized for making it too obvious. Yeah, actually, I think his main apology was for, like, we moved too quickly, like, yeah. boiling frog style. So I was yeah. like, oh, so you were okay if we did it a little slower, but... Yeah, exactly. He's just, he's just sorry that he got caught. Yeah. If it makes Basically, you feel better... Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. No. No, go ahead. I was going to say, if it makes you feel better, our BC uh, chief medical officer said... I override the constitution, quote unquote. <laughs> and I was like, that, whoa, that's bold. <laughs> that's how that works, huh? <laughs> well, hmm. uh, on that, uh, I was listening on a show and somebody somebody asked the question about these, these chief medical officers of health, at least in Ontario, that make all these rules with a stroke of a pen. They don't have to take it to an elected official. They don't have to pass any rules. They don't, with a stroke of a pen, they can make whatever rule they want and it, somehow becomes law. Yeah. They're not elected, they're not accountable, and... And they also can't really get fired either. Yeah. No. I thought ruled by a decree was what we're trying to get away from, but... Uh, hey. well, what do I know? <laughs> anyway, as for myself, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed the last week, but Roger's cell service was all fucky for a day. It sure was. What? Yep. Yeah. That was not the biggest... <laughs> I mean, I didn't notice. Yeah. Week. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice at all. Yeah. I just like I laughed. I was like, "Wow, this is so like apropos for ham radio and stuff." Because I flipped on the radio and it was going gangbusters on the repeaters, and all the guys were like, "Oh, is your cell service out?" And and it was like, uh, it was it was the ham radio day. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool actually. It was a very live demo of how backup communication is still always there. Um, I, did they ever find out what actually what happened with Roger's cell service? Yeah, it was a, a software update for some of the er Ericsson hardware on the on the network went all I'd say, uh, I'd say that if I got hacked too yeah, yeah exactly I, what I would say I blame it on another company for sure course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Ericsson is still a thing I didn't think so but it was yeah I would have thought yeah. hacking for sure but uh, yeah for oh, all I those totally that, thought that for all those that are outside the country uh, yeah our basically nationwide we had a cell phone coverage uh, failure of basically half of all cell phones in Canada because we've only got really two major companies and a few offshoots um, yeah, so yeah that, that, just, that was that just feed off those two major companies so yeah, so that was uh, that was a pretty big deal. So especially yeah. like actually, I ran into a couple problems during the day, but luckily I prearranged meeting times and places with my daughter, so we didn't have to text back and forth. And so having a, a plan in place ahead of time helps as well. So that was good. What, um, being prepared is a good thing. Yeah, it's almost. I'm like, learning this for the first time right now. Turns yep. out talking to your teenagers ahead of time also helps instead mm -hmm. of just assuming they would do what you would do. So you you assume they listened. I guess yeah. they did in this case. Well, they did actually. It was weird. Yeah. So, might have been a first. Um, also, so not to be outdone by Ontario, BC came out and said, like, 
our chief medical officer said she's going to make up the law as she goes. So um, they actually put in even weirder travel restrictions, thinking that they were going to kind of skirt around the problems that Ontario ran into. They're going, don't worry, we'll make it equally authoritarian and oppressive to everybody. We'll just have like random check stops and then just grill everybody. And then all of a sudden, you know, even the RCMP uh, said not so much that they didn't think it was constitutional. They just didn't think they had the manpower to do it. Um, Again, that's what I would say if I didn't want to cause a fight. Yeah, exactly. And if anyone wants to say that's the legal order or anything else. But anyway, so they just said, we don't have the manpower to do it. So BC said, well, no problem. We'll just put all these authoritarian restrictions on hold for one week because they're supposed to come in on Friday. And now they're going to be next Friday. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, although I, the best quote of the day I saw was uh, our premier's name is John Horgan. And so somebody started calling him Kim John Horg Un. So, which was pretty awesome. But, anyways, I like it. He loses this week. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all I had for news. Oh, look at that. COVID again in the news section. <laughs> Come on. Weird. That's, so, yeah, that's, that's we're 100 weird. episodes deep now on that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, I shockingly have a news article that is not related to COVID. So, I mean, uh, there's other stuff happening in the world. I know. Weird, isn't it? So uh, I found a article from Wired.com, which is a, a techie publication. I know, weird for me looking at techie weird. stuff, but uh, I know, whatever. Uh, so it's titled Seven Emergency Preparedness Apps to Keep on Your Phone. So the uh, there's, there's a couple that are listed out. I've got a, a few here I'll, I'll mention. Um, yeah, if you open the article up, the very first one it says is FEMA. So get your tinfoil hat out. So, so let's give FEMA its due. They actually have some pretty good resources for preparedness. I would, not you know, trust them in an emergency, but they have some great ideas about how to help yourself in an emergency. As if they recognize that they can't actually help you, but they don't want you to die. That's fair. Yeah, even most provincial emergency authorities just have some good basic reference material on their mm-hmm. website. I wouldn't, like, depend on them to feed me. But exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's another one called uh, Harbor. It's uh, apparently it's a trivia app about emergency preparedness. So if you're bored and you want to answer some trivia questions, I'm done with that right now. Check it out. Or uh, if your cell service is out and you're, yeah. you can't text. Yeah. yeah. Some options there. Uh, there's a couple of first aid apps that are listed. You know, your typical uh, Red Cross, um, stuff like that is all listed. Uh, and then Zello is on there as well, which is a, uh, a little radio app, like a walkie talkie thing. So again, you're, you're going to need data. So if you run into the issue that we did uh, with Rogers being down, it's not going to really help you, but uh, unless you got Wi-Fi and you've, you got internet that way, it'll still work. But just a couple of, a couple of ideas to look at and something besides COVID and they didn't want to mention a COVID app. So that's good. Well, that's nice. Yeah. That's well, interesting. Like I was thinking, uh, Echolink just as a as a reminder for yep. future hams and stuff. Once you get a ham radio call sign, you can get on a- Echolink there, and not so much for you receiving stuff because obviously, if you're using Echolink, you probably have internet or cell service or whatever. Yep. But if you want to broadcast out of a repeater somewhere else, you could yep. always use Echolink to broadcast to your friends that may have a power outage in their area. Yep, absolutely. You can yeah, you can hop on a note on Echolink anywhere in the world on your phone. It's uh, it's quite handy. Yeah, so I was just thinking it's backup comms if uh, if yeah. your other person's uh, got an issue. So yeah, hey, we've got the technology. We may as well lean on it if it's running, right? So yeah. it's a good option. So shall we move into what we've done lately for preps? Sure. All right. So for myself, uh, still working on the uh, the fence in the backyard. So kind of planned out the route that uh, it's going to take. Uh, purchased the materials for it from a local establishment. So. Uh, Got uh, got a good price there on uh, on the lumber and such, which is nice given the the COVID cost on the big box stores. So, uh, of course, while planning out the uh, the run and the way that I'm going to set the um, the fence up, I, I also thought about uh, how I'm going to use it to run some coax cable for for an antenna or three or four. So, uh, did some vehicle maintenance as well. Got the oil changed in the truck, tire swap. So, uh, yeah, totally my fault that it snowed the other day. And uh, then swapped out the winter gear in the truck for uh, spring and summer stuff. Cool. Question, quick, uh, quick question on coax cable for you, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm assuming you're using like an RG58 kind of cable? I'm using LMR400. Okay. Uh, so what kind of a price are we looking at? Like where do you source yours and everything else? Uh, so that is a cable. There's a place uh, just in Newmarket here. Cables Unlimited, if I remember, or Infinity Cables. So that's where I get my stuff. I'll put a I'll put a link in the uh, the chat here for everybody if uh, when I get a second here. But, uh, that's where I get my stuff. They've been fantastic for me, and 
It's uh, the, the LMR 400 isn't cheap. And if you are going to be doing LMR 400, don't uh, don't make the mistake I did. Get the uh, the Ultra Flex stuff because uh, I just went with the the standard. It is a bear to work with. So uh, In Infinite yeah, Cable was the link you sent me the other day. Yeah, yeah, Infinite Cables. That's it. I may or may not have ordered some RG58 off of uh, AliExpress, but I'm not going to hold my breath on the quality of that yeah, stuff. So. I would not. Yeah, no. <laughs> I I also made that mistake once. And yeah, it's uh, it, there was some very interesting interference when I started transmitting using it. But you learn, right? Yeah, I'm sure my hair will stand up on end if I uh, start transmitting with it, but we'll, yes. we'll play your ear. <laughs> All right, as for myself, uh, I did a, a first for me. I did uh, two different range trips to two different ranges, obviously, in in the single day. Uh, there's like one at the north end of Nanaimo, one at the uh, south end. And yeah, I hit them both for various reasons. One doesn't allow shotguns. The other one was kind of closed until 4 p.m. And then last shot had to be at 4.30, but it's the only place allowed me to shoot a shotgun. So anyways, I had to go running around. Uh, the good news is, because again, the uh, local constabulary leaving brass behind, I managed to put in some range goblin time, which is very important. Um, and so yeah, I picked up uh, I think I sold this week about $130 worth of brass. Nice. Like, yeah. So, yeah, so I picked up the brass, washed it, tumbled it, dried it, and then put it, put it up for sale and it sold within hours. So, good fundraising for the preps. Uh, that was good. Uh, let's see here. Went shopping with a buddy for some uh, golf clubs at Cabela's. And... Uh, <laughs> Did some uh, technical advisory work on that because he didn't know uh, what's a good brand and what's a good price and everything else. So it's kind of being a tech advisor for that little uh, situation. Did some wood stacking here. Really yeah, that's right. Uh, did some wood stacking, of course, probably just like Jeff did. And uh, let's see here, I did some more ham study. I'm trying to work on my advanced, but it's slow going on that. Uh, I did run around and met a local ham radio operator and picked up some ham radio mass sections for free, which was good. Need to worry about grounding now. And then I bought some uh, antenna wire off a local guy as well, just some RT58. I ordered a, a re tactical antenna. I, the tactical got me every time, right? So I uh, I only got it because it has this, this foldable antenna business. And I thought, okay, well, I, I looked at YouTube, had good reviews, and I couldn't even get half a mile with it. So that's a ripoff. Anyways, a Bree is the brand name for those people that are interested. Don't ever order it. It's it's really almost close. almost like some just putting tactical on something doesn't make it better. Ta I was fooled by the tactical, but the whole idea is that you know, basically it's, you're supposed to be able to put it on your shoulder, back, whatever. It's supposed to have, say you know fold it over so it doesn't get caught in the bush, and then when the time comes, you flip it up and you're good to go. No luck. Anyways, I uh, put in order with Fifth Ops, which is fire on the hole operations out of uh, the U.S. And all of a sudden, they announced because of the COVID, they've closed the border for deliveries. A I lot no of places idea. have. I have no idea why Corona can't cross the border via, uh, you know, bear bangers because, and stuff, but I don't know. Because people have to cross the border, and therefore it, it gets more expensive because of, because of the, the delays. So it's really a shipping cost for the number of people that, uh, um, for every truck that goes across, they have to I, they have to go through significantly more time at the border than they used to, so they have to bill for that time. I learned about that. Yeah, so anyways, uh, so yeah, fire on the hold, too bad, because uh, they had a really good sale. There was actually the deal of the week for the longest time until all of a sudden I got the email this morning, like, we just canceled your order because you're in Canada, eh? <laughs> that was the end of it. I was like, okay, well, forget you guys. So that was the end of my uh, what I did for preps this week. That's possibly the shortest list you've ever had. It was short. Are you, are you sure you're done? Like, I'm... I could ramble I'm, I'm a still, little bit. I'm still, waiting, I'm still waiting for my coffee to brew. I, I was expecting yeah. to have more time. Uh, I made some progress on getting my garage ready to, de to demolish. Um, I, everything is taking forever right now. I'm f still four weeks waiting for utility locates before I can land equipment to demo the garage. And the good news is that it's moving forward and I'm getting closer every day. Uh, started two a day uh, workouts for doing PT. Got all the little bits and pieces together finally for my vehicle radios. So the next step is actually installing them and then programming them. And we'll figure that out another time. But that's what and I did. For me, it basically was one word, wood, wood, and more wood. That's four um, words. My, my uh, friend is, a, is an arborist, and he called me and asked me if I wanted a couple of trees. Turned out to be six, about 40-foot dead ash. 
So between the cutting, splitting, and stacking, I'm not done yet, but I've got about four and a half bush cord in my shed right now. Nice. That'll keep you warm for a few years. Hopefully, yes. That's the plan. <laughs> I won't make any wood comments. Oh, come on. You just wish you had heard wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just, yeah. Shots fired. <laughs> We're going to leave that one be for now. Yeah, let's, okay. let's, let's move into the main topic after that one. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to Ver Scott. I think he hasn't uh, shown up yet. So, uh, anyway, Scott uh, actually put him for this topic because, uh, yeah, he started enjoying this podcast around the 80s or 90s uh, numerically for the episode list. And it is, I agree, it's a little intimidating to look back. Oh, here's Scott. Speak of the devil. There. Scott. Are you still oh. there? Maybe not. Yeah. I'll keep there talking you know. for him. Anyways, um, he found it a little intimidating to look back on all the episodes and had to catch up on. So uh, after him and I had a quick little chat, we started asking uh, maybe we should just point out our you know, personal host favorites because basically it's a little much to take in when you first want to get in preparedness. So we thought we'd talk about our five favorite episodes and why. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Ian, one of the things that I also mentioned in the notes that you skipped over is that the conversation was how you like doing the shows for the listeners and to sort of make it more listener friendly. So that was kind of the, the impetus to, to get that started. But see, now you're making me sound like a nice guy. That's, no good. <laughs> That's why I skipped over that part. <laughs> <laughs> I got a reputation to pull. <laughs> anyway. He's an angry elf. Yeah. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> I have a bench down in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Call me an elf again. Oh, uh, anyway, so, okay. So, as for why, uh, yeah, it is overwhelming to start. Absolutely. I agree. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, everybody's like gets to that panic mode. Where, you know, geez, I got to get into preparedness, but how are we going to get started? So, eat that elephant one bite at a time. And uh, yeah, so I guess we could start off with my first one, which is canning and preserving. Uh, Ooh, episode 36. Bite of elephant. That is a tasty that one. one. Yep. And actually, it just turns out that uh, I had a commentary on that on the interwebs uh, just a couple of days ago from uh, on Gab, and somebody was actually asking if there's you know somebody out there that actually knew anything about canning and preserving. I'm like, we got a whole episode about it, and um, sure enough, yeah, I ended up getting a bunch of uh, feedback on Gab, positive, and I guess a couple people are listening as well. But uh, yeah, I like that episode myself because uh, it's like a gateway drug for prepping, you know, like basically it's, it's something that if you say you're getting into canning and preserving, nobody's going to think you're a kook that's waiting for the alien invasion. Right. So it's kind of like a society friendly, normal in society kind of uh, subject that uh, honestly, it is, there's no downside to getting into it. At the very least you're going to, you know, eat, se- not going to eat seasonally. You're going to be able to keep the excess for another time. And also the fact is that uh, it happens to be our most downloaded episode of all time. So that's why it's kind of my number one fave. Thoughts on that one, guys? Well, I think that's the one that my uh, my better half was on too, wasn't it? I think that she was. Have, yeah, might have had, might have had something to do with the uh, the number of downloads. Well, she's she easier to look at than the rest voice. of us. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we got faces made for radio, most of us. So. Um, well, I think my camera's off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So yeah, no, I just uh, I I thought it was a great episode as far as that goes. Like we had great feedback on it right away. We had lots of downloads. It's a normal yeah. subject, and not everybody talks about like the pressure canning aspect, which is like you know not everybody does that. Most people just do the water bath aspect, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and it's it's also it's also pretty universal. It doesn't matter what you think your threat is, canning and preserving is beneficial to absolutely every person. As most people discovered during the pandemic here, because they seem to have bought out every single piece of canning and preserving <laughs> yeah. equipment for the last six months. And we finally just started getting some lids in here in, in Nanaimo, like maybe two weeks ago. And I, I was sold out for the last year. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. Um, yeah. So number two for me was the apartment prepping episode. Uh, and the guy that actually wrote in originally that was suggesting it to us had some good points in the fact that like not everybody gets to live in the country. Most people have to work in the city. Um, the vast majority of Canada's population is now in the city, right? It's better than 50%. And uh, it's more of an everyday approachable, like relatable kind of aspect uh, because like, uh, you know, most people are still planning on bugging out because they have to. Um, 
so yeah, we during that episode of which is episode twenty eight for apartment prepping, uh, we brought up uh, stuff like storage size issues, like you know not everybody has room for five hundred pounds of rice in their apartment, and or some big water tubs, and you know water barrels, rain collection, the whole works and stuff they can't do, not just because of size but also strata constraints. Um, you know, obviously OPSEC if somebody comes to visit and all sorts of other things. So it was a really interesting take on prepping and the fact that, yeah, apartment prepping isn't easy. Yeah, I like that episode too because it kind of focused people on you're not always going to be planning to bug out. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are planning to bug in, right? And I think that kind of brought home the fact that, yeah, but there's nothing wrong with bugging in and planning the bug in um, and some good ideas as to how to do it in a yeah. small space. You're also not necessarily subject to flooding. If you're yeah. in an apartment, which I always thought was a great thing, plus it, it offers you better security if you do have to stay in. If you do have to stay in, as opposed to going out, you have some more. You have some better security options. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of actually. I probably even revisit that one at some point too because mm -hmm. there's probably some other stuff we didn't cover properly. Always looking for suggestions on that, guys. Um, third choice for me was episode fifty nine, which was the five hundred dollar budget. I think that was popular with a few of us, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a, that was a good time. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah, I think we all put a lot of homework into that one because you know. It's basically a lot of give and take. Like, you know, as much as I would like to put the AR-15 with, you know, like, uh, you know, night vision optics and everything else, that's that's not going to work with preparedness on a $500 budget. So um, we had to break it down to basics, right? Like, we all had to sit there and think about food, water, shelter, clothing, you know, all of this stuff. Um, so it makes it more attainable to the, to the person starting out because, you know, if you sock away 100 bucks for, for a few months, before you know it, you can do this $500 startup. And you kind of get... I guess, uh, what do you call it, a sense of accomplishment or like some sort of a you know, return on investment fairly quickly. Um, and you feel like you've actually got something under your belt as far as preparedness goes. So, uh, Plus, if we get to instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it was good. So go ahead, Scott. As a listener, I really like that episode where a bunch of the different panel members were on, everyone kind of bringing different ideas to the table. So getting into prep, you're sort of having six different opinions on things so you sort of get to suck up a little more knowledge in the process i think that would be another one that'd be fun to do again you know Absolutely. or whatever and uh, we don't get to review our previous show notes for it yeah and that's always going to change too right as as new things are available and and things change in your life and the way that you're setting things up and doing things that that little bit of money that you start out with is going to change and the ideas are going to be different so yeah i'd like to re recycle back to that one eventually too like i'm sure i'd be spending 60 bucks on my budget on something something like this right like yeah who knows yeah. right and we could also we could also kind of change that up and do a uh you have 500 dollars to spend right now what do you buy because again, because yeah. all, like all of us have different priorities, we all live in different parts of the world, except for like Eric and Jeff. Uh, we all live in different parts of the country. We all live yeah. in different, you know, urban and rural settings. We're all going to have different priorities, and yeah. uh, I think that'd be another that'd be a fun fun twist on that. I think it would be. Yeah, I, I like that episode too. Is anybody taking just... notes on this, by the way, as we come up with yeah. all these weird ideas? Oh, yeah, we can watch it back again. I'm okay. Sure. <laughs> well, Scott will put us on the straight and narrow for, for topic ideas. He's got access yeah. to that now. So. <laughs> yeah, I like I like that starting with five hundred dollars one as well. It's on my list uh, just because it helped people realize that you don't have to drop a ton of cash to get started. Right? You, you can set a, a smaller budget. You don't have to go out and buy you know all kinds of like thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment. And it just gave everybody a, a general idea as to where to start. Well, yeah, because you imagine if uh, like a generator or at least a, a good generator for 500 bucks so i mean that's that's a huge budget item and that's yeah. pretty overwhelming too when you think of what you need to get but if you get enough food and water under your belt to last three weeks then you're well you're already ahead of most people right so yep. with minimal investment mm -hmm. and so much of prepping from my perspective is just thinking of this stuff ahead of time and making those little tiny incremental changes no you're 100 percent right it's a it's a process not a destination Yep. We're always preparing. We are never prepared. That's true. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. How many other cliches do you think we can throw? We can fit in. Yeah, there's got to be some more cliches we can throw out at this point. But. <laughs> <laughs> As we think, it's all built on a solid foundation. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Speed of the leader, yeah. speed of the team. Hit the are you going to start talking about carbon monoxide now, too? <laughs> <laughs> it's like four oh. episodes down. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Someone was going to say it. I just got there first. 
All right. So, my, uh, so for all the listeners out there, this has now become a drinking game. Anytime somebody mentions carbon monoxide, <laughs> and anytime Ian mentions brass. Oh, well, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Guilty. Yep. No. Did I show you guys that that bucket of brass I got? Never. <laughs> Never mind. Has uh, anybody okay. heard about uh, carbon monoxide? <laughs> It will oh. kill you, and it will hurt the entire time you're dying. Yeah. So uh, let's see. My episode number four choice: fortifying the doomstead. Yep. Um, yeah, I thought it was good because it wasn't just about preparedness. It was actually about everything from gardening to reducing your insurance costs because if you're less likely to get broken into, you're less likely to have a claim, and uh, you know, basically becoming less of a victim in society because as people get a little more desperate during you know depressions and economic downturns they're going to turn to stuff like petty theft. So, you know, Fortifying the Doomstead episode 43 was kind of a favorite of mine. Just simply the fact is it's, it's an everyday mainstream idea. Again, like lots of people can appreciate, you know, hardening your, your, your house. There's a hard joke again, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but the fact is that, yeah, everything from like uh, gardening underneath the window is putting some thorn bushes there to like, just making your house look less of a target for thieves yep. and, you know, maybe not being all about the show for once. It was uh, it was a good idea, actually. I thought it was, uh, it was a great show concept. Again, we could probably dig into that one a little more, too. But, because if you're avoiding burglary, you're probably avoiding the zombie horde, too, right? Well, 100%. That's what we're all preparing for, isn't it? Is the zombies. Yeah. Wait, there, right. there are other emergencies other than zombies? No. <laughs> no don't start uh, with that. <laughs> carbon monoxide. Yeah. <laughs> carbon monoxide. That's a serious problem. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Jeff. Well done. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I did enjoy the fortifying the doomsday one as well because it, it, it again it brought all kinds of different viewpoints from various panelists and kind of amalgamated ideas and and got everybody thinking, right? And I yeah, I like that one. It, it included carbon monoxide detectors, I'm sure. It, it actually did. it I did because did. we talked about uh, burglar alarms and we talked about fire alarms and the yeah. fact that uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, battery powered versus uh, grid powered, <laughs> which was good. Uh, last one I had, guys, was uh, episode ten early on. I think Alan, you were already on the show by then, weren't you? Uh, I think number six was my first. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. So um, ham radio episode one. Yeah. Um, not so much that it was like super duper informative. It was more broad strokes. We kind of yeah. got a little autistic later on, but we're, we're going to do so again next week. By the sounds oh, of yeah. it. But um, it started the, kind of the buzz for Ham Radio for Alan and I to kind of get motivated. It took us a while, but both of us. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it was only a year later that I got my, finally got my license. Yeah. I finally uh, converted so, you guys. Well, it did motivate me. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is because, like, everybody talks about becoming a Ham Radio operator for preparedness. Nobody talks about why. And nobody yep. knows why, generally, because it's like, oh, yeah, I should do that. Why? I don't know. Because I read a book. Somebody else it. told me. Yeah. <laughs> and this, this, these three jackasses on a podcast told me I should do it, and I was like, <laughs> "Which yeah, like, podcast I, was that?" Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's only three of us back then. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like honestly, I, I was like, okay, I guess it could be handy, and you know, I, I don't care. I got two of these sitting in my my closet. I'll just when the zombie apocalypse happens, I'll just crank them on and put them to use. Yeah. As we discovered, testing <laughs> your gear is important. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I thought it was awesome, and the fact that basically it's one of those things that we've come back to well, multiple times by the time next week's over. And the fact is that it is a handy thing and you don't realize how handy until you start getting into it and how much of it's it's not exactly a, an easy thing to master or at least put to practical use, if that makes sense. I also really appreciate how we're slowly devolving into the Canadian Ham podcast. There already is one. And you know what the worst yeah. part is? Is that I, I was listening to them and I was like, geez, what a bunch of nerds. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm listening to this it's voluntarily. So that makes me... Uh, no, it also makes you a nerd. It's <laughs> like, a nerd. Because <laughs> <Nerd. laughs> I was sitting there nodding to listening to these guys like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's good point. Yeah, that makes like, good oh. sense. Oh, wait a second. Uh, now yeah, I'm wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's safe to say that you can't you can't be a ham and not a nerd. I think the two things are pretty uh, pretty closely tied. Yeah, totally I don't know what you're talking about. I am, I am also a nerd. So. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about at all. Totally disagree. <laughs> my, my wife is giggling with me because like every Saturday morning there's a, the local ham radio club has like a zoom call and I'm like oh yeah that's pretty cool and she's like yeah right now like 20 something Ian would be smacking around 40 something Ian so <laughs> yeah but... <laughs> anyway and unfortunately my uh, my local club they're they're um, 
meeting nights tend to tend to conflict with another standing uh, standing training night I have, and so I, I have to watch it back, but I don't get to actually participate. At least I get to watch it back in Zoom, which is kind of the benefit of us not being able to get together in uh, in person. Is that there's a recording of what happened and what the discussion was. But I digress. Yeah. Uh, yep. So that yep. That's me. Has a comment on there. It says, "Have you ever uh, considered building a Faraday room in regards to preps?" What do you mean, you folks? That's yeah. right. What do minute. you mean, you people? Yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> no, that's uh, that would be an interesting uh, an interesting discussion for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, like, because doing a whole room, I suppose if you had steel, like, roof and wall material. Yeah, that's one thing is, like, aluminum aluminum yeah. siding and metal roofing, and if it was properly grounded. Yeah, I, yeah. it would certainly yeah. be a, a thought. I mean, you'd have to get it sealed up pretty good. But, I mean, from what I understand, is like, some large-scale barns kind of act like a natural one if they're all metal. <laughs> but, yeah, I think grounding would be an issue. Yeah, it would be interesting for sure. I. I'm still needing to manage to accomplish a garbage can one yet, so I suppose we should probably get on that. Yeah, <laughs> baby steps, right? Baby steps. I just I like to mention, <laughs> if you do build a Faraday room, there should be CO detectors in them. There should there definitely should be, be. In, case of, in case of electrical fire, especially some kind of some kind of, a, some kind of smoke detector as well. Yeah. yeah. So anybody that's following along the drinking game, you should be pretty much through your bottle by now. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, and how much brass was that that you found the other day? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for me. So uh, I guess over to Alan. Um, some of my favorite episodes. I like the the raising poultry episode. Uh, I thought that was great. It's again kind of fairly universal. You can apply that just about anywhere across the uh, across the country, uh, except possibly apartments. But it was a great kind of intro into what to what to do, and it's you know it sparked our our desire, kind of one project at a time, but um, sparked our desire to to uh, to get some chickens. And I like that one. Uh, the epi- that was episode fifty six, episode sixty seven. The decision to bug in versus bug out. We talk a lot about when to go and where to go and what your what your beautiful bug out location is going to look like, but it's it's harder to it's more involved to discuss whether whether or not to stay in play or load to go, and that's I think the uh, it's a really important one because it's one thing to say well I'm just going to pack up at the first sign of trouble, but uh, reality is that for the most part you don't have to we just have to be able to weather the storm where we are. Yeah, I like that one too. Again, just to get people thinking, and yep. the, the poultry episode as well, just because it's it's on my my list of things to do. So uh, I certainly learned a lot of that one. I think it's a it's a popular one for a lot of people in the preparedness community. So it's definitely an important one to watch. I still get bugged so about too. it at work because I had I was doing the Mr. Bigglesworth thing with the chicken the whole way through, and, uh, <laughs> that, and was yeah, the, that, that was the that was the large dark colored one, right? Yeah, yes, it was. Was. that would be the big black cock. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, he's not doing too well. I got to actually look at him tonight. He's got some leg mites, but anyways, he's yeah. still carrying on. So, fantastic! Oh, the comments. Um, I think one of my favorite episodes was number seventy-two. Uh, was the five-gallon bucket challenge, and what all can you pack into a single five-gallon bucket? I think that I just had a great time doing that one. Um, again, it, it yeah. goes back. It kind of ties back into the the apartment storage, where uh, you don't need a lot of space to be well prepared. Yep. Yeah, you actually. Know, that that was one of my favorite ones too, and I liked, uh, you know, part of the the idea of looking at doing multiple things with one item. You know, one item could, you know, like a paracord. You what it, what what all you could do with it, and it it kind of opened my eyes to think, okay, yeah, I don't need five of these. I only need two because the two will do the other three that I don't need parts for. So, I that was uh, that was one of the first ones I was involved in, and I really got a lot out of it. Yeah, I enjoyed that one a lot. I managed to uh, duck out of that one because I was afraid to actually show what I'd done. But no, <laughs> actually, no, I uh, I unfortunately missed that one. But I was actually like kind of no, that was, that was just you. That was just you and me. Ian. Was you it? The, you used the um, used the water cooler instead of an actual bucket. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, I was thinking of a different one. I was. I also had the remember the uh, the dumping out the water on my keyboard with the uh, the. Uh, what to do with the, the poopies in the apocalypse? Yeah. But uh, yes, uh, yes sorry, the sanitary episode. Yeah, that's right. I did use the uh, the cooler. That's right. Okay, so because yeah. I, I had a problem with that one too, because I was like, as soon as you put a tarp in there, you've used up you know a good chunk of your space, and I was like, oh man, that was no, it wasn't so much cost; it was actually space constraints that was really space, getting me. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, so I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Um, episode 62, The Pocket Dump, um, just because we're all gear geeks at heart, uh, just kind of what's in our what's in our pockets. I love doing that. I'm, I, I kind of petitioned to make that a weekly feature, but we, uh, we didn't do that. Um, but I, I like that one, again, just because everybody – Everybody has a different perspective. Everybody has a different need. Everybody has different abilities, right? Based on your job, there are certain restrictions you face, and so uh, how you adjust to those things makes uh, makes for makes for an interesting discussion. Do you want so to do it every week? One. Do you want to do it every week now? Yeah, I kind of want to make it a, a weekly feature. See, now I'm going to feel bad. It's going to be the same thing every week almost, but. <laughs> Well, I, no, just say we, I just I just say we vote again no and carry on. <laughs> so I hate showing off this dinky little knife every time again. Like, geez. Also, I'm not wearing pants, so yeah, I have no right. pants. Oh, like, oh. like, huh, well, you, you got, we're done. You got, you got the prison wallet. I mean, you've that's right. Got that, right? So. <laughs> um, and then I think uh, just uh, I think it was episode six. I don't have the show notes going back that far. I think it was episode six. Was our was the water episode. Uh, and I, I think uh, that was that's probably my personal favorite because it was my first episode, and they haven't kicked me off since. So, back of the days with the big giant clock in the background, with the big giant clock in the background. That's right. Yep. <laughs> um, yes. No. I, I, those are those are my those are my favorites. Uh, and I mean, the water episode was a good one. It, it's uh, again, it was early, but it was it was great. I think that's possibly also the most effort I've put into the show notes since. <laughs> Well, yeah. You also notice I didn't mention the hunting episodes. <laughs> oh, hey, those are fun. Those yeah, are we got times. we got skunked. Uh, we did. Did we ever? We haven't done uh, another hunting episode since. No, we haven't. No. Yeah. Oh, I just looked. Uh, episode nine was water. So there you go. Episode nine. Okay. Yep. I'll change that. So I'll I'll change that in the notes right now. Episode nine. There you go. There we go. All right. Cool. Well, that was it for Alan, I guess. Yeah. That was, so that's all of mine. So, uh, so my list, just speaking of water, you know, it's, uh, the preparedness world. It's like drinking from a fire hose, right? And <laughs> just listening to the last couple of lists, there's, there's already tons and tons of information to, to know, but, um, you know, you can be quickly overwhelmed, but you know, that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons why we started the podcast and keep it going is to help people out. And my list, I, I started out with, uh, I believe it's episode number seven, which is uh, Canadian versus American preparedness. And I got that on the list because it's uh, there's a lot of common misconceptions about things you can and can't do in Canada versus the states, and there's always all kinds of if if you search out preparedness on the internet, you're going to get all kinds of stuff from the states, and and a lot of it is is valid for Canada, mm-hmm. but a bunch of it doesn't work here just because of rules and regulations and such. Which you know if you you know some people just say oh, I just won't follow them, but there's times where you have to so decisions have consequences decisions have consequences yeah so i i, I rather enjoyed that episode um and i know a lot of uh, listeners liked it as well just because it helped show some of those differences mm-hmm. um, and then i think that was actually the first episode that i listened to and then i went back and listened to the rest huh? and then so said these guys first. clearly need help so <laughs> Well, well, I, mean, I forget. I forget what episode number eight was, but that was when I decided to to send you an email and and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I forget what it, I forget where it was, yeah. but I, re- I remember the email. It was on carbon monoxide, wasn't it? We didn't start talking about carbon sure? monoxide like episode sixty. <laughs> are, are you sure it was episode sixty? No, it was probably episode nine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've got on my list as well, uh, starting preparedness of 500 bucks. I've already touched on why we, uh, like, yeah. why I like that episode. And, but yeah, I think that's, uh, if, if you're looking to cycle through episodes, that's definitely one to, to stop by and check out at episode 59. Um, I cheated a bit. I, I clumped a couple episodes together. Um, episode 53 and 60. Um, I, I enjoyed those ones. Those, those are the uh, Talking Corona with uh, Dr. Joe Alton. Those are good. And I, I, I enjoyed those because it... Uh, it kind of started out with the, the preparedness world is or is just thinking, well, this is it. Everything we've ever prepared for, it's it's happening. It's time oh, to hit man. the go button. Right? Yeah, like you're, you're just going back and listening to the news articles from those episodes and like the the three or four leading up to it. Um, yeah, we like the world was convinced that this was this was I am legend time. Yep. Well, that's because the, the Chinese were throwing out videos that showing people dropping dead in the streets, and oh, supposedly yeah. crematoriums were getting overrun and all this other yep. stuff. And over in Iran, they had had these mass graves, and yeah. obviously it all turned out to be a load of crap. But anyway, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, I, 
I just like that episode because, like we said, the, the rumor mill was rampant, but we took the opportunity to kind of slow things down and get some relevant information out to mm-hmm. people. Uh, a lot has obviously changed, right? We know a lot more now about uh, what's going on with uh, with the whole COVID thing. Uh, but the advice in the episodes is still valid. You know, um, Dr. Alton came out, he gave us some good information, some relevant information and accurate information versus all the, um, you know, the, the running around rumor mill that was happening. Um, so it's it's just a good reminder to slow things down, research and talk to some people that actually know what they're talking about and have some credentials behind them because that's where you're going to get your most accurate information from. Well, I think it was good in the fact that we don't even get some street cred by having, you know, a pretty famous guy on here. Probably one of our more famous hosts. Not No offense to the other yeah. hosts, but anyways, uh, but also the fact is that, yeah, it's more mainstream because you, you've got, like yeah. you said, a guy with, with that's credentialed and, you know, a subject matter expert coming on. And it's not just us pontificating what we feel is the right answer. That guy just said, no, this is the way it is. And yep. it was it was very well done. The fact that basically I think it helped calm a lot of people down and just, yep. you know, like you said, slow them down and focus on the, the fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, and that and was episode 53 and 60. He is such a nice presenter to listen to, Dr. Alton. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. And and like when he was on, he was, you know, full of information, willing to share anything that uh, that we wanted to know. And yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was awesome. And we hopefully we'll have him back uh, in the near future. We'll see. Cool. Don't worry, there's not another pandemic or anything. We just want to talk about medical stuff. <laughs> uh, my next one on my list is episode number 24. So that's lock picking. That was a good one. That was a good one. I enjoyed that one. And it's still still pretty popular as far as people asking for information on uh, on that skill set. And I, I like that one because it's a skill set you can practice anywhere, right? Like I'll sit down, watch TV, throw Netflix on or something, and I'll just practice some locks and see what I can get open and, and frustratingly what I can't. Um, and it's something that you you may never need to know. And if I can't get a lock open, then I call Alan. I say, how the hell do I get this stupid lock open? And you tell me. And, that I, tell the, and I call Ian and find out what kind of ammo he's I don't know why you yeah. don't call me. I have the perfect answer. It's called a, a sledgehammer. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. A solid boot, I heard. Yeah, Yeah, or a torch or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think I said it in that episode, and I'm, I'm, I've definitely said it since, that the only, the only difference between a locked door and an unlocked door is the amount of violence that must be enacted upon it. And sometimes it needs a little finesse, and sometimes it needs a little more, uh, a little more encouragement. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> and for certain legal reasons, you must only open doors to which you have lawful authority. Lawful authority. That's true. And and like I said, it's a skill set that you might not necessarily ever use, but uh, if it comes to the point where you do need to lawfully use said skill set, you've got it. Mm-hmm. And it's a fun party trick. It's a fun party trick. <laughs> Uh, and my final roundup of episodes is episode 10, 69, and 110, which is uh, nice. all three ham radio episodes. So, And I just put those in there simply because I'm a nerd. Come on. Yeah, I know. Weird, right? <laughs> no, it's it's important stuff to know. And it's uh, like uh, like we mentioned already with the ins list there. It's, it's good stuff to know. It's uh, It answers a lot of questions as to why. You would need to know it and why you should go get your license and and it's just some interesting stuff so, mm-hmm. and communication is a big important part of the whole preparedness thing it has to be yep it absolutely has to be there's no, there's no way around it yeah like we've, we've decided we've, we've proven that the lone wolf the lone wolf concept just doesn't work no no it, it'll work temporarily but well, not for the long run no and it was all yep. It was also kind of Rogers to remind us how useful exactly. it was. Exactly, it was. Yeah, that was uh, that was a very nice reminder. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was ironic that the day that that, that that the cell phones went down for that day, my antennae were in transit from Toronto to London or Toronto, to, yeah, London yeah. and then wherever they went. From. Of course, they were London. They went from London to Strathroy to, or to Stratford and then somewhere else, and then eventually my house. It was. Because why take the direct route? Yeah. Why, why take the direct route? Yeah. It was interesting watching the tracking. <laughs> Still made it in two days though, which was which was exciting. Yeah, oh, that's oh, right. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, so there you go. Next that's up my, is insulation. Uh, my list. Get there. Yep. Um, I do not call consider myself an expert prepper, uh, but I have been thinking about this stuff for a while. Uh, I I recognize some of my own strengths and weaknesses in the like normal prepper stuff. The, 
water, fire, fuel, food, uh, medical side. Um, you know, we talked about the, the $500 prepper episode. I thought it was a fantastic way to get thinking about the, the basics, get into it. Um, but what I really love is the, um, just the different things I learned that I've never thought about, hadn't even occurred to me to think about, and uh, you know, things I can add to my random skill set. Um, you know, I, I love the, the tips and tricks you can kind of pick up here and there about make something easier, make something more redundant, resistant, whatever. Um, you know, I love old technologies that don't rely on an internet-based subscription service that's traveling 5,000 kilometers through uh, fiber optic wires that I have no control over. Um, you know, and I, I like things that you can build and fix and modify and improve and uh, anyway. That being said, some of the episodes that I really enjoyed were things that just taught me stuff outside of my skill set. The, the lock picking episode is a great example of that, um, where it's sort of presented as here's a potentially useful skill that, you know, you know, th three or four people looking at the same lock, but you can discern more information and figure something out. You're at an advantage. Um, the uh, you know especially that applies to the, the gray man episode uh so lock picking was 24 gray man episode 11. um <clears throat> just looking at you don't you know the same people looking at the same information if you can discern something more from it um you know it's a great place to be if you can kind of subtly blend into the crowd um, you know, we, we talked about the, the doomstead fortification, same thing, you know, a nice little quiet, discreet thing that doesn't draw a lot of attention. I think that's a, a huge advantage. Um, so I really like the Gray Man episode, just you know, ways of thinking about things that hadn't occurred to me before. Well, I'm, I'm the worst one for it. Like, I've got a, a drawer full of stickers I'm just dying to put on my truck or something to show off what I have. But then I'm like, oh, i have giving away too much information if I put that buck mark on the truck or the the magful <laughs> sticker or whatever i'm just like why would i tell everybody that you know and like i'm actually as far as gray man this is actually a question for eric too as well uh in bc they say well basically next time you have to replace your plates it's the same price as a regular set of plates but if you're a ham radio operator it'll give you your call sign as a plate and i'm like huh but then i was like do i really want to tell people i'm a ham do i do i not i don't know because then somebody might try and call me while i'm like, driving and it's one of those things where like even now i'm still kind of debating the uh, the gray man thing so it's uh, it's an ongoing thing for sure. Yeah, Ontario's got the same thing for the vanity plates, and yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> like you pointed out to me that uh, like my address was available uh, if you looked up my call ID. Right, I completely forgot about that when I registered and, and sent away my paperwork for my uh, my ham radio license. So yeah, that's a huge gray man thing if if you forget about stuff like that. Because yeah. yeah, if you're cruising around with a plate or you're you know mentioning your call sign on a podcast. Who did that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. so luckily we took care of that aspect before we, we talked about it yeah. here. But yeah, yeah, like it was so funny because the longest time I was like, oh my, oh geez, I just realized that Eric, that you're like totally telling everybody where you live. Yeah, <laughs> and then, didn't even and think about as, it. And as soon as I got my call, so I was like, dude, you got to really like switch that out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because I mean, I, I had the same thing through one of my alpaca things too. And I was like, yeah. I can't believe in a roundabout way. That's how somebody could figure out where I lived. I mean, now I pretty much advertise it anyway, but um yeah, no, it is. It's a hard thing to constantly keep a, an eye on that gray man concept. It is so oh, easy yeah. to get away on you, and uh, yeah. what you're telling people is huge. And um, yeah. so now I think that at least the Canadian government, believe it or not, got on board with with privacy issues, and and now you don't have to tell people where you live based on your call sign and everything else. You can just yeah. tell what province you're in. So yeah. well, they it will be published until you tell them not to. Yeah. So, so if you are concerned about that, you might want to check the industry Canada or whatever they call themselves. Yeah. Industry Science and Development Canada, uh, yeah. and get them to block off your address because, yep. again, you know, or just do what I did, and now my address is Ian's place. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Genius. Yeah. Um, one of the other episodes that I really liked was one hundred and two. Uh, really cheap things that can derail your preps. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was just lots of fantastic ideas that anybody can grab, start with, think about, 
um, you know, just little things and lots of the, the pointers and tips that I really enjoy picking up um, sort of ideas that, yeah, a dollar store pencil case to put the extra spark plugs in, zip tied to your generator, and you never have to worry about finding the spark plugs again. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that episode for, you know, just all sorts of little nuggets of uh, ideas and wisdom. Well, I just uh, discovered that last week. Remember, I said I, had, I was changing out everything on the generator with the oil and the spark plugs, and I realized I didn't have any spares. So I was like, <gasps> you know, like again, cheap item that, you know, obviously, if it's part of your preparedness plan to be using a generator, you should have spares of any consumables. And that was like a huge gaping hole. So I had me kind of like sitting there, like, oh, I can't believe I got caught with my pants down again. But <laughs> it, not figuratively, not literally, but I'm just saying, you know. Gonna leave that one be. Teach their own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. like, like Scott, I'm I'm not a a great prepper. I, I guess I've been a bit of a closet one for a while. I guess. I mean, I've I've had the wood stove for a long time. Kind of never really thought about it as a as a prepper thing till you know power kept going out in the winter and. Um, I really only got serious in the last couple of years because of, you know, we're getting more extremes of weather um, and uh, just basically a lot of the political unrest that's been going on, um, which we'll talk about that our um, on our book club thing, but that's, that's a big, big one for me. So um, the one episode um, that I picked, we, we sort of already talked about it. The first episode I watched was the bug in or bug out. And it got me thinking a lot about, um, you know, how to protect the house or, you know, if I needed to bug out at that point, I had nowhere to go, no supplies, no, I'd be running around trying to collect up things. So, you know, that got me thinking about, you know, maybe is there somewhere else I can go? Um, you know, I've, I've thought about the idea of, of a small utility type bug out trailer that you could put shelves in, you could put a drop down bed in it maybe and and just have something that if you need to go for a week or a couple of weeks, you know, I'm not I'm not talking about a long drawn out thing, but um, something that you could get loaded up in say a half an hour and you're gone and you're set for a few weeks. Yep. Um, and the other one uh, that a lot of people mentioned again, I mentioned it was the five gallon bucket uh, one. Like I said, it's amazing what you can actually get into a five gallon bucket. Uh, the rationale for the items of, you know, why you needed that as opposed to something else. And like I said before, having items that serve multiple purposes. Yeah, well, with a bug out trailer too. Again, it comes in with a gray man. If you have like bug out trailer written on the side, that's a problem. But <laughs> I'm actually, yeah. Yeah. I was actually debating a couple of trailer ideas on that too. And, and I was thinking, Right around here, you know those old two horse trailers that have like just a single set of wheels that nobody wants anymore. I don't know if you can get one cheap around there, but they're starting to clear them out around here. And I was saying maybe one of those would be a great little thing because nobody really bats an eye at a horse trailer, right? And if, if they're enclosed, it's like because they're, they're, they're nice and high, they're like a six foot trailer, right? Yep. 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 And yeah, it's, it's just uh, normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's just something to think about. It's like maybe a little little uh, hiding plain sight thing. That's Unless you got horse thieves, I guess. <laughs> well, just just don't tie the horse ups to it. Yeah. Be fine. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a good recap of um, a few episodes to to listen to. And again, we're trying to just help out anybody new getting into the podcast that is looking at it, going, "Okay, 114 episodes. Where do I start? I don't have nearly that amount of driving to do." Um, there's a couple of options for you now. A couple episodes that'll kind of steer you in the right direction and hopefully get you thinking and and get you some information quick instead of having to, to hop through every single episode. As I keep saying, I apologize for episode number one because it's about eight minutes of me awkwardly talking to myself. And well. Yeah, uh, that's fair. It's growing <laughs> pains, right? But by the same time, though, like every, everybody's journey is different. Like we, I think we yeah. said a few times now. So like if you're not even sure where to start, drop a line. We'll yep. gladly you know, take a look at your situation or whatever. But also the fact is that you may not agree, and that's cool. That's, yeah. uh, let us know what's different for you guys. I mean, yeah. Yeah, different priorities, different places, right? Yeah, that's one thing that's stayed consistent through all 114 episodes is we're willing to help out where we can, give you some ideas and tips and tricks, and take criticism along the way, too. If there's something that we're saying that you don't agree with, let us know. Cool. Well, it's a podcast challenge time. I guess so. Uh, Alan Ditch starts to take over for him here quickly. So, uh, 
podcast challenge this week, Basie, is to get one new listener for us. So go out and like you know spread the good word or something, uh, and then get them to listen to what you feel are the best fundamental episodes. I mean, which might be completely different from us, but uh, I'm trying to get more people on board. So uh, yeah, less people have to worry about uh, rushing to the Costco at the last minute. Awesome. All right, upcoming events. So we've got coming up actually tomorrow, so April 26th. Uh, there's a webinar put on by the World Health Organization uh, in regards to Chernobyl uh, and just recovery lessons for radiation emergency preparedness. So that'll be something kind of neat to, to throw out there. It, it starts uh, tomorrow, so it's the 26th of April. Uh, runs from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. It, it didn't indicate in the link if that's Eastern Standard or or when that is, but um, I'm so I don't know what the time zone is, but uh, link is there. It'll be in the show notes. I'll throw it in the chat here too for anybody that's interested. Hopefully it's not like Switzerland time or something. Hopefully not. <laughs> oh, actually on that note too, the Can Warren thing we mentioned last week, it was sold out, unfortunately, uh, right away it seems. But uh, I was told by the Can Warren people they're going to put on more episodes down the road. So if uh, anybody's interested in, in these like uh, storm watching episodes for the Can Warren thing, um, just keep an eye on Eventbrite, should show up there momentarily. Awesome. Uh, deal of the week? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So uh, despite uh, Fifth Ops leaving me hanging with some really good deals there that were uh, down there for like everything from tripwire alarms to bear banger, flash bangers, and flare pistols that were all like on clear out. Um, I did find one of at Cabela's here, the Coleman Instant Tent. So it goes up in like 60 seconds, hit, seats eight, eight people, which really means about four. Uh, but it's 100 bucks off. So I put the link in the show notes there for the uh, the eight person tent for camping season and or bugging out. Um, good deal. Look at that, and you can use the hundred bucks you saved to put towards your five hundred dollars to get started in preparedness. Or Patreon. Or Patreon, sure, yeah, <laughs> if, if that's what you want to do. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's move into some shout outs. So uh, for uh, myself, you wanted to read Allen's. Yeah, Al just said uh, Eric and Ian for inviting me back after the first one, Dr. Alton and Nurse Amy for their appearances, and the listeners, of course, without you, we'd just be talking to ourselves. Just for the record, we did not invite him back. He just won't go away. We're just too polite to tell him to go away. <laughs> <laughs> In typical uh, Canadian fashion, right? Uh, hey, you know, yeah. It's just the way it worked. He, he yeah. showed up once, hasn't left, and, well, is what it is. We let him mention carbon monoxide every once in a while. And it is, whatever. Uh, so for myself, a quick, uh, quick shout out to Jackie, our newest, uh, Patreon. Appreciate the support. Awesome. As for myself, uh, honestly, all the guest panelists we've had over time, including Scott and Jeff, uh, who may be a regular fixture here if they, if they choose, uh, everybody and anybody is welcome. If you've got something to yep. tell us, if you're a subject matter expert, uh, don't be shy, come on the show, tell us what you want us to talk about, anything at all. Cause honestly, that's what's been making the show as far as I'm concerned Absolutely. is having the guys that actually have specialized knowledge. Cause I don't think any of us know everything. So, no. uh, shout out to huge, a huge shout out to all the guests that have you actually volunteered their time to come on, which has been fantastic. Uh, I'm going to shout out you guys for putting all the work into this podcast. Um, you know, recognizing how much work actually goes in behind the, the scenes. Um, you know, for, for the benefit of all of us to be entertained and educated. So thank you guys. Yeah, it's right fun. We like doing it. Yeah, it's, it's been enjoyable every week. Yeah. All right, shall we move into email and iTunes reviews? We've got a couple of reviews up. So first one, uh, five stars. So appreciate that. And it says, uh, you guys are awesome. Love the banter and content is top notch. I uh, started listening a month ago or so. Uh, I've been working from the beginning between new episodes. Uh, I grew up less than an hour from Listwell, and I appreciate the little nods to everyone's favorite Ontario show. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, he's referring to Letterkenny, because I do yep. believe the main star of uh, Letterkenny is from Listwell. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a pretty funny show overall. It's a great show, and we appreciate you for listening to our show. That's right. <laughs> I guess would that make me squirrely Dan or Alan? I don't know. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, anyways, <laughs> all right. Uh, I got one regarding compost. Uh, it says I'm a fairly new listener, but have been doing a lot of catch up. I love the show and definitely share your opinions. We recently moved into a new property that came with a large three compartment compost bin. 
as a kid on the farm, all the kitchen compost went to the chickens. I was wondering if you guys had any tips on how to turn the compost into good dirt. Thank you for your knowledge and keep up the good work. And that's from Welder Kyle. Um, yeah, uh, go. I, I can start if you guys want. Sure, go for it. Yeah, honestly, what we do is the same thing. We use we don't have a green bin per se, unless it's for stuff that the chickens don't want. But between the alpacas, the chickens, and the dogs, really don't have much of a green bin. I find that basically the alpacas and the chickens will process most of your compost for you uh, into poopies. Um, what I end up doing is I get free like uh, wood mulch from the local arborists. Uh, whenever they have like leftover shredded plants, they just kind of bring over a, a load of, for free of, of compost that they pay to get rid of otherwise in the dump. And then I mix in the chicken poop and the alpaca poop with it, turns into good soil. Around here between the, the constant moisture and the temperature, it just turns into dirt within a couple months anyways. So I've been really lucky for that, but I pay for it with rust. Um, but yeah, like as far as turning it into good dirt, I would just say let it sit for six weeks, turn it, give it another six weeks, and you're probably good to use. So that's all I got. Worms are your friend, but they should appear naturally. Yeah, I don't have a whole heck of a lot to, to add to that. Yeah. Uh, a, a friend of mine very much enjoys composting and has had a lot of success adding nitrogen to the compost. Um, the, the nitrogen source may be related to the processed supply of the drinking game when carbon monoxide or <laughs> brass is mentioned. Um, I can't say firsthand, but he reports very good results with uh, with that. So, Well, there's a certain there's, problem with moisture. If you have too much moisture, it won't break down. If you're not enough, it won't break down. Um, so there's, there's that fine balancing game. But a lot of times between natural rainfall and turning it, you're probably going to be fairly okay for it rotting down on its own. And basically, as soon as you see the mycelium, which is the white stuff in your compost, or mushrooms on top, which is nature's teeth, you're probably doing well. It's going to turn into soil as fast as it possibly can at that point. So that's what I have to say. Cool. cool. Awesome. Well, with that, I'll bring episode uh, 114 of the Canadian Prepper podcast to an end. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, or of course your favorite podcast app. Uh, please help us out. Submit a review. It helps other people find us. We record these shows live on Facebook and YouTube. If you want an early peek at the shows, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Canadian Pepper Podcast, and click the notifications tab. It gives you alerts when we go live. All right. Scott, where can we find you? Uh, easiest way to find me is uh, feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. Uh, I believe Alan at 1L. Prepperpodcast.ca is how to find him if he hasn't dropped off the internet. <laughs> I think he just decided to show his disdain for the listeners at the last minute yeah. there. You should probably email him a little bit about carbon monoxide. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's it. Any that's questions that. for that? All right, you can reach uh, Ian directly by emailing me at theislandretreat at gmail.com and on Gab at the Island Retreat. Uh started my group, Self-Reliance and Hope Setting Canada. Six members still. Six solid members, though. Right. <laughs> and, better, uh, better than zero. That's right. Uh, you can find me on Canadian Patriot Podcast uh, as well on iTunes and YouTube. We record on Monday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. And there you can find us discussing why uh, government waste in society is making me try to bring in new listeners. <laughs> oh, well played. <laughs> Jeff, where can everybody get a hold of you? Uh, might as well, uh, same way to get a hold of Scott, just that feedback at pepperpodcast.ca. I'm sure uh, one of you two guys will forward it on to me and we'll go from there. Yeah, we know where to find you. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, please check out Rapid Survival at rapidsurvival.com. You can get me there on the live chat. Uh, you can also email me at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. So thanks for joining us this evening. Until next time, be prepared, stay safe, and keep learning. Mm -hmm.